Hello, this is the second video in the sequence on planning with Julia. I'm now introducing the time dimension. Previously, I had been using what was essentially Leontiev's techniques and explaining the Leontiev technique in planning. Now, before I get on to the new material, I'll respond to the comments I got on the last video. The first one people complaining that they couldn't download it. I had made the error of not enabling uh, SVN on SourceForge initially. Now you should be able to use Subversion to do a checkout, do an SVN checkout on the um, repository. Um, why didn't I use GitHub? Well, I used SourceForge because I've been using that for a long time and it was just easier but I've put up a github copy as well for those who prefer github. I was asked whether this is the same as the method I propose in the Jack Ma article which is a bit which appeared in the world review of political economy. It's not identical in that the within year approach in the Julia code uses Leontiev's technique but the between-year approach remains the same as in the, the Jack Ma article. Now, so far we've been using this sort of matrix format, um, a standard two-dimensional array of data about agriculture, industry, construction, or whatever the other services you're going to use, other industries you're going to mention. This is a very small I.O. table, but you'd obviously have bigger ones. When you move to doing things in time, you have to move from matrices to tensors or from two-dimensional arrays to three-dimensional arrays. With the additional axis, the depth axis, being the time axis. So you're dealing with cubes of data uh, rather than um, De dealing with just squares of data. And similarly, the where you previously had output vectors, which was just an output vector for the year, which is the standard format of Marxian economics, uses output vectors for the year, it uses the A matrix, etc. That's all standard Marxian economics. When you start moving to planning, you have to add an extra dimension to the um, vectors so that the output vectors become output matrices with the second dimension being time uh, extended into future time, year one, two, three, etc. So in general, when you're adding the time dimension, you're literally adding a dimension or adding a rank to your tensors. If we use um, the the mathematician's term. Computer scientists tend to talk about it as a being a dimension, but there's some ambiguity about what dimensions mean. So um, let's call it a rank. Uh, what are the main tensors that you have to work with? We well, have a capital stock tensor, which is capital stock by year, product and product. So for a given year, you have a capital stock matrix, but you have these matrices stacked after one another year by year. You also have an investment tensor. So each year you're producing a certain amount of investment of good X for industry Y. So that's a matrix for each year. And then that's extended through time to become a, an investment tensor. What's the relationship between these tensors? Well, the capital stock tensor is the integral of the investment tensor convolved with the depreciation function. That's to say, the stock in year N is the sum of investments in years 1 to N weighted by depreciation. And that's just a general property of accounting for capital stocks in an economy. You have some choice over 
which way you're going to represent depreciation. And in uh, accountancy, there are two broad ways you can do it. You can do it with a linear depreciation, which is shown in the blue line, where if you start off with 100% of your capital stock, after 15 years here, uh, you've ended up with zero of the capital stock. This is modeled by things which finally wear out at a, after a fixed number of years. So if, if you had uh, aircraft which have a safety timeline of a time life of 14 years and you're not allowed to fly them after 14 years, that would be an appropriate uh, form of depreciation. On the other hand, not all things wear out totally in, in a fixed time period. If you assume that 10% of them, or, or let's say 7% of them, wear out each year, then you have a more gentle depreciation, a negative exponential depreciation. And that is also commonly used. Um, I give illustrations of how to use each of them. The first program uses a straight line depreciation and the second program uses exponential. But since depreciation and inverse depreciation are just functions, provided you can write the function and it's inverse, you can have any function you want there, provided it's monotonically decreasing. Intertemporal costs. How, if society invests in stocks of means of production in 2020, it increases its future consumption potential in 2021, 2022, 2023, etc. But it does so at the expense of 2020's consumption. And you have to have some way of balancing off the increase in consumption and well-being of society that will be possible in the future against the losses that are going to be incurred in consumption by devoting more of society's labour power to producing investment goods this year. How do you balance them? Broadly, there's linear and non-linear ways of balancing them, just as there's linear and non-linear ways of doing depreciation. The simplest solution is to just schedule investment so that total consumption over the n-year time period is maximised. But what I've found is that when you use Kantorovich style linear programming and set that as your objective function, it leads to very sharp cuts in consumption in the early years, ones which, if you, they were actually put into practice, might be politically unacceptable. And if you download my earlier Kantorovich style planner, which is called nyearplan.java from GitHub, and run it with similar sort of data, you'll see that it tends to load the investment very heavily in the first year. And uh, whether that would be politically acceptable is a moot point. I mean, it famously happened in Soviet industrialization. Um, here's a graph which I've reproduced from my book, How the World Works. The dark line shows Robert Allen's estimate of real wages in the USSR in the period from the late 20s to just before the outbreak of the, um, the Second World War. And what he was showing was that there was a sharp drop in consumption caused by the heavy load of investment in new machinery and plant and equipment but that there was then a rapid recovery uh, and consumption rose, real wages rose to well above their starting level because the new means of production allowed higher efficiency of production. And there were attacks on Allen's data by Wheatcroft and I independently tried to verify Allen's data by looking at child growth rates in the Soviet Union as a percentage of what the um, WHO says is the norm or the optimum, the normal rate of growth for children who are fed an adequate or good diet. 
and you see that during the period that uh, Alan um, provides his data for, the child growth curve is extremely closely correlated. So uh, we can see that during the early stages of investment, child nutrition was falling, then it rapidly improved, then fell again during the war and rapidly approved afterwards. So the question is though whether it would be politically acceptable in an already industrialized country to have a very sharp drop in the first few years. The alternative is to use a, a non-linear weighting. The aim being here to penalize falling below um, your desired plan output more than you reward going above plan output. So you, an appropriate function that does this is x over 1.1 plus x. Now why do I say 1.1? Because I think it's very unlikely that x will ever get smaller than minus 1. And x is the ratio of output achievable in year n with that plan compared to the output that is desired or is set as a goal. And the aim is to say it's always better to produce more but producing a lot more in the future or sorry producing the same amount more in the future is not enough to compensate for redu reducing current consumption by the same amount. You have to produce substantially more in the future to compensate for um, a comparable reduction in current consumption. So that uh, if this is one is the level at which you're exactly meeting uh, the goal, if you f fall to half the goal, that drops you more than raising half above the goal two years ahead. Now, it's been, I used, used an, another version of the harmony function in Towards a New Socialism, but Alan Cottrell pointed out to me that that one didn't have a continuous first derivative, and that can probably lead to instability in a numerical optimization. So I've shifted to one which does have a continuous first derivative. There remains the problem of going from an industry-based harmony function, that is to say, the harmony for an industry in a year is its uh, ratio is given by a, a function of its ratio of actual output to desired output. How do you compute the harmony for a year as opposed to an individual product? There are two ways you could do it. You can either take the mean of all industries harmonies that year, or the alternative is to say we will s say that the harmony for the year is the worst, is that set by the worst performing industry. And in after some experimentation, I've decided the second approach seems better. If you simply take the mean of all industries harmonies, you can find that the plan can set the actual consumption for some industries very low. Um, can assign almost all of a, a year's output to investment um, because and that gets masked by allowing more consumption of other goods. So I, I'm going for taking the lowest harmony of all industries in the year. Next the problem is uh, compressed time scales. It, 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 it's notorious that capitalist planning is is short short term doesn't uh, consider things in the long term and if the same would apply if you just construct a five-year plan and only optimize over five years what's going to happen year six seven eight etc so I avoid this by automatically adding more years to the plan 
um, and as I assume stable goals and stable labour supply available for all years after the last year you specified. And how many extra years? Well, it's tunable by a variable called depreciation horizon. Uh, the principle being that if your capital stocks are depreciated to zero after 14 years, say, then no changes beyond 14 years are going to have any in, in, impact. So um, I've chosen 14 because I, I know that this is a year that a lot of national accounts use as a depreciation horizon um, for, the, for the national capital stocks. What's the con convergence criteria? Well, what the algorithm does is it looks at the years which are below average harmony and determines how much investment of every type of good would be needed to bring them up to average harmony. And we'll call that A umlaut. It then scales this by some small fraction epsilon uh, to prevent the adjustment overshooting and looks at which of the preceding years will produce the biggest increase in overall harmony if an accumulation level epsilon a umlaut is scheduled that year. Convergence terminates either when some maximum number of attempts has been made or the coefficient of variation of the harmony, coefficient of variation is standard deviation over mean, um, falls below a threshold. Uh, or alternatively, when no possible accumulation resulting in an overall increase in harmony can be found. For example, if the constraint on a low harmony year is actually the labour supply, not the stock of means of production, then there would be no possible accumulation remaining that could could be used to equilibrate harmony over all the years. Um, the input data for the programs, it's comma separated value tables, uh, an IO flow table, basically a, a standard IO table as shown in the first video, a capital stock table laid out the same way. You'll have to do some research using published data to estimate this. Uh, for real economies. I, I can warn you it's a fair bit of work. If you want to take, go from published data and take a say 50 by 50 IO table or 80 by 80 IO table which would be realistic for published data and then estimate what the capital stocks are you'll find yourself having to do quite a lot of interpolation because the national accounts really break down the capital stocks into as much detail as they break down the um, labor supply, sorry, the, the fl flow in the um, IO table. But it can be done. Um, then you also need a depreciation table um, laid out the same rate, same way as others. Point is that different capital stocks are have different lifespans and this is the 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 point where my examples are the most hand-waving because really you would need advice from accountancy experts as to what the realistic depreciation periods of different types of capital goods in different industries are and finally you need a labor targets file what I call a lab targs file. This is the layout of uh, the fire file for the example. This is a, again an example for the EU. Um, for example, the last column gives you the labour that's going to be available in each year. Labour in terms of um, labour power purchasable at current wages. And each other cell says the target final consumption after deducting investment and intermediate consumption for for that year and since it's the EU it's all given in in millions of euros um, so that's the basic data structure you've got to work with I give the example data structures for uh, data tables for the EU just for debugging purposes and to illustrate the format that should be used. If anyone wants to work on this and to 
use it for studies for propaganda purposes, you will have to do a fair bit of, of real statistical research yourself. You will have to go through national accounts and transform the I.O. tables into a consistent format like this. And the sorts of uh, things you have to make sure is that the rows and columns have got the same definitions. Um, the layout is transformed into the kind of Marxian layout that I suggested, that you handle foreign trade the way I suggest, etc. So if you're going to do this kind of work, you actually have to get some practical experience with reading national statistics. This is not something you're generally taught. You have to learn that yourself by doing. Okay.